Shalom, beloved. Shalom. Shalom, beloved. The enemy is trying his best to prevent me from coming online tonight. He's trying his best to prevent me from coming online tonight. But you see me? Listen. I'm, look. I bind and rebuke the prince of the power of the air in the name of Yeshaya. I bind and rebuke all his minions, all his demons in the name of the Most High Power. Most High, bind every spirit, bind every demon in the air right now, preventing this message from going out. This message is filled with the power of the Most High. Bind every demon, Most High. Bind Hashatan, bind Semahaza. Send Raphael to bind him hand and foot. And put him back into the desert, do that hell with all his Nephilim uh, minions. Trying to stop me from coming on the air right now. It's not happening. Beloved, this is a day of warning and not a day of many words. Doctrines and Covenants 6358. This is a day of warning and not a day of many words. You see what's going on in the state capital. All of that was already prophesied. All of that was already prophesied. The, the Almighty already said they're going to turn on each other. We're going to get into it, beloved. I want to make this sweet. I want to make this short. And I want to make this quick, precise. A couple of weeks ago, I made three videos. Two of them is titled. They look like this on my channel. Go back to it, beloved. I urge everybody to go back to it. Go back to these videos and watch these videos. They are titled respectively, The Generations of the Terrible. In the seal brother Jared chapter 12, Aki was having a conversation with Messiah and Messiah showed Aki so much that what Aki saw terrified him and he wanted to run and hide behind a tree. And Aki asked Messiah to please, please take this horrible sight from me. Take this horrible sight from me, Messiah. I can't, I can't take this. I can't, I can't take seeing my people, your people, living in the midst of the generations of the of the terrible. The sad part is, right, our people are also included in the generations of the terrible. It is not just the Gentiles. It is not just the other nations. <coughs> it is also our people all up in that generation. Go back, beloved. And watch this video so you can see what time it is right now. I break down everything. One of them is over four hours long. The other one is about two and a half hours. And I had another one called Messiah Cries. Messiah Cries. Listen to these videos, beloved. And get edified by what thus says the Messiah. You see what's going on today. The enemy is taking up arms. Listen, they're supposed to do that. But see, all of that is playing out. You're not supposed to be afraid. You're not supposed to be afraid, beloved. Remember, Messiah comes to, re to reveal the love. <coughs> Give me a second. I need some water. Messiah comes to reveal the love, the tenderness, the deep affection of the Almighty Father. He didn't come to... He didn't come to reveal the wrath of God. No, Messiah comes to reveal to you how to have reverence for the Most High, how to have deep respect for the Most High. I have another lesson on that coming up. I had to do part two. I did part one, I have part two. But remember, the love of God is also protection for you. The love of God is also safety for you. The love of the Creator is also you abiding under the shadow of the Almighty. The love of the creator is him, is the most high, assigning all his angels charge over you. The love of the creator is also the destruction of the wicked. Remember the story about fear in this book. Remember, I, I told this story over many lessons. Fear, not fear. Yeah, the story is about fear. But listen to this, let me... Let me tell you again how it goes. Plague was coming from a spot where plague had used an epidemic to kill a hundred people. A hundred thousand people. Plague on his way back from killing a hundred thousand people, allegedly, 
run into famine. Famine said, play, congratulations. I gotta, bro, what's up? Yo, you the man. You the man. I gotta congratulate you. You kill a hundred thousand. I gotta congratulate you. Plex said, hold up, wait a minute. I didn't kill a hundred thousand. I only killed 10,000. Fear. Kill the rest. Plague told famine. Well, hold up. I didn't kill 100,000. I only took you at 10,000. Fear set it off on 90,000. And 90,000 died of fear. Don't fear, beloved. No. Believe and never doubt. The most I says, I have put a hedge of protection around you. In the book of Aki says the Mosa, uh, in the book of Aki, the Mosa says the barriers are back. The angels of the Mosa are back on the earth, protecting your family, protecting your house, protecting your wife, protecting your husband, protecting your children, protecting your businesses, protecting you. Every step you take, every breath you take, everything you gaze upon is being recorded. The angels are watching you. All the echo of the shore is surrounding you. If you walk in holiness and you walk in righteousness, there is nothing to fear. Mosiah said, believe and never doubt. Believe and never doubt. Messiah comes to reveal the love, the deep affection, the tenderness of the Father. Not his fear, not his wrath. In the beginning, that's how men learn to respect God. They have to have this notion that the Mosiah is terrible. They have, to, they have to believe, they have to be convinced that the Mosiah is horrible. It is a very uneasy feeling. How can you have a relationship with someone that you're afraid of? How can you have a genuine relationship with someone that you believe is terrible towards you? No, beloved, that was in the beginning. We're not in the beginning, we're in the end. So whatever is going on in society right now is just for you. It's, it's the love of God. Whatever is going on right now is the love of the creator. Is the love. That's how the Mosai is expressing his love for you right now. Destruction of the wicked. Let's go into the scriptures. Let's go into the scriptures, beloved. Let's go into this big Bible here. Ancient. Let's go to the to Ezra 15. Let's see what that says the Mosai about today. This very day. Not today as a general. No, no, no. Particularly January 6th. 2021. This is a specificity prophecy. This prophecy is down to the least vowel. It's down to the every vowel, every every word. This is a very specific prophecy. Let's see what the Mosa says about it in Ezra 15. Let's go from the top so we can get context. Behold, speak in the ears of my people the words of prophecy which I will put in your mouth, says the Lord, and cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. Fear not the imagination against you straight out the gate. The Most High says what? Fear not the imaginations against you. No. Believe and never doubt. Fear kill 90,000. Plague kill 10,000. Fear kill 90,000. Plague kill 10,000. But famine gave plague the credit. Plague got the credit for killing 100,000. Meanwhile, fear is in the cup, killing more. Than plague could ever kill. Most I sing, fear not the imaginations against you. Don't fear the vaccines. Don't fear the weapon. Listen, listen. What happened to Paul? Paul got beat by a snake, a poisonous snake, and nothing happened to him. Let's just say you had to take the vaccine. As long as you were a righteous brother, as long as you're a righteous sister. As long as you have love for the brethren, you walking in the fruits of the spirit, unconditional love, 
compassion, charity, love for the brethren, love for thy neighbor, as long as you're not cheating on your wife, molesting your children, as long as you're not blaspheming in the name of the Lord thy God, as long as you're keeping his laws, statutes, and commandments, as long as you're trying your best to live a holy life and a righteous life, as long as you're doing this, beloved, you can take a hundred vaccines. It will not affect you. This is straight from the kingdom of light. You will not be, you will not be affected by poisons. Poisons cannot affect you. Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Nothing defiled can enter your body and thrive. No, sickness does not belong in you. Vaccines will not prosper in your body. Nothing will prosper in you. No, only the words of the Mosah, only Rahaviel, the breath of the Mosah will go through your lungs and clean you out. No, the vaccine won't affect you. If you got to take the vaccine and you don't have a choice, it is what it is. I'm not telling you to go take the vaccine. But if it gets down to it and you got to take it, you pray to the Lord thy God. Most high, you are forcing me to take this vaccine, Father. I call on your mighty name today. Whenever that thing hits my system, may it die on impact. You see, you got to pray straight to the Most High. The Most High will give you health. Remember, Messiah comes to give you life. And that more abundantly. Fear not the imagination against thee. Let not the incredulity of them trouble you. Don't let that. Let's look up the word incredulity. Incredulity. Let's get the correct meaning. Incredulity. What is incredulity? Meaning the state of being unwilling or unable to believe something. The state of of being unwilling or unable to believe something. So now they're unable to believe that it is the Most High who is scourging the earth. They are unable to believe that the Most High says, in the last days, I have cursed the waters. They are unable to believe everything I'm about to read right now. So let's go. Fear not the imagination against you. Let not their inability to believe that the Most High has revealed his arm on his earth right now trouble you. Behold, says the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world. Esdras chapter 15. Behold, says the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the earth. I will bring the sword. Moses says, I will bring the sword. I will bring famine. I will bring death. I will bring destruction. Selah. Take a moment with that. Take a moment with that. You got to blow the shofar when you read something like this. Behold, says the Most High, I will bring plagues upon the earth. I will bring plagues upon the world. There's a difference between the world and the earth. I will bring the sword. I will bring famine. I will bring death. And I will bring destruction. It gets better. <clears throat> Why, Most High? Why are you doing all this? Your people live on the earth, Father. Your people live on the earth. Zion, whom you love, live in the world. Why are you bringing plagues, Father? Why are you bringing famine, pestilence, death and destruction, Most High? Aren't you thinking about me? I live in the world. Your children live in the world, Most High. Why would you bring plagues? Why would you bring famine and death? Why would you bring destruction knowing well that I live in Connecticut? Knowing that your people live in California? Knowing that your people live in Texas, Miami, Florida, Missouri, Illinois, 
Idaho, Utah, Jamaica, Haiti, Trinidad, Africa, Europe. Mosa, why are you bringing plague on the earth? For wickedness has exceedingly polluted the whole earth, the Mosa says. Wickedness has exceedingly polluted the whole earth, Mosa says. Wickedness has exceedingly polluted the whole earth, Mosa says. And their hurtful works are fulfilled. Woo! Their hurtful works are fulfilled. Woo! Before I continue, let me read you something else. I, no, we're not. Let me finish. Let me finish. For wickedness had it, has exceedingly polluted the whole earth. And therefore, and their hurtful works are fulfilled. Hold up, I gotta read this. I can't, I can't help myself. I gotta, I gotta take you to the cold brain real quick. Let me tell, let me show you what happens when wickedness overtakes the earth. Cold brain. The flood of Atuma. Page 35. Let's go. In those days, it is written, it is written in those days, in the record of Beth Shira. In those days, the people were wicked. And though the wise men among them gave them many warnings of the wrath to come. Hmm. It is written in the record of Belteshira. In those days, the people were wicked. And though the wise men among them gave them many warnings of the wrath to come, they would not listen. They would not listen of the warnings of the wrath to come from the wise men among them. Such, such is the way of the wicked. So it came about the chastening spirit became stirred up against them. It came about the chastening spirit of the Most High became stirred up against the people who would not listen to the wise men among them about what? About the wrath to come. <clears throat> the chastening spirit became stirred up against them because of the smell, the odor of wickedness arising from the earth. Musa says wickedness has exceedingly polluted the whole earth and their hurtful works are fulfilled. So when wickedness pollutes the whole earth, when wickedness rises up, the chastening spirit gets stirred up. The chastening spirit gets stirred up. For earth, listen to this. <clears throat> The chastening spirit became stirred up against them because of the stench of wickedness arising from the earth. For her nostrils hates the smell of evil. This smell, no man can know this smell. No, this is a spiritual smell. This is a smell that you cannot detect with your, with, with your uh, nasal cavity. No. No man can know this smell, says the Mosah. For as the hounds, as the dogs know the smell of fear, which no man can detect, so can other beings, wait, other beings also know the smell of wickedness. Other beings can detect the stench of wickedness. Other beings can detect the smell the stench, the odor of wickedness, which have awakened the chastising spirit. <clears throat> Let's keep going. Let's go back to the book of Ezra. Ezra 15, Ezra 15. We're going to repeat verse 6. Wickedness has exceedingly polluted the whole earth and their hurtful works are fulfilled. So now we know based on the covering and based on Ezra, the chastising spirit has, has awakened. She smelled the stench of wickedness. That's why the Mosai says what he said in verse 5. Behold, says the Lord, 
I will bring plagues there here already upon the whole world. I will bring the sword there here already. I will bring famine. There is a famine right now. I will bring death. Death is happening every day. I will bring destruction. Destruction covers the earth, whole earth like a blanket. The chastising spirit has awakened. Let's go seven. Therefore says the Lord, I will not hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness. I will not hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness which they profanely commit. Neither will I allow them. Neither will I suffer them in those things in which they wickedly exercise themselves. Moses says, I ain't going to hold my tongue no more. And I'm not going to let them do what they've been doing no more. No more. I'm giving my angels charge over them to sing their battleship. I'm telling my angels, pull out Psalm 91 and recite Psalm 91 in reverse. Do a rewind on them. He who dwell not in the secret place of the Most High shall not abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will not say of the Lord, he is, I will say of the Lord, he is not my refuge. The Lord is not my fortress. The Lord is not my strength. I will not abide under his shadow. I will not abide under his wings. No. He will not give his angels charge over me. No. In the hands they shall not carry me. I will strike my foot against the stone. Plagues. Pestilence will strike me in my household. Yes. The snare of the fowler will catch me. The most I will tell his angels, go ahead and sink my battleship. Why? Because, because I'm wicked. Because I'm wicked. This is a day of warning and not a day of many words. Beloved, listen to this. Moses says, I will hold my tongue no more. The angels going to do a Psalm 91 in reverse on all the wicked. They are no longer under the shadow of the Most High. No, the Most High is not protecting them. No, even the Nephilim can protect them right now. Even the evil spirits cannot protect them right now. The contracts that they sign with the devil has expired. They are wide open for destruction. The Most High is taking authority from Satan. They are wide open for destruction. The barriers, the angels, all the hosts, the heavenly hosts are on the earth, cleaning the earth from the pollution of the filth of the Nephilim. The Most High is pissed. Let's go with it, beloved. <clears throat> I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness, which they profanely commit. Neither will I allow them to keep continuing doing them filthiness on my world, on, on, on my earth. Behold, the innocent. Behold, the righteous blood cries unto me and the souls of the just complain continually. Behold the innocent. The innocent young man who, who goes to court mm, for disturbing the peace and gets a 20 year sentence as if he just committed murder. The innocent blood. The innocent man getting pulled over by the police for not wearing his seal belt. Getting shot up. The innocent man driving down the road to the grocery store doing a 54 and a 55, getting pulled over by the wicked cop and never make it home again. Those souls, those souls of the innocent cry unto me, says the Most High. And the righteous blood cry unto me. And the souls of the just complain continually. The souls that are under the altar in the book of Revelation crying unto the Most High. How long, Father? How long will you avenge our blood? Most I said, just wait a little bit longer. Well, beloved, we right here. There's no more time. The Most High is scourging the world and he's setting it off on the wicked. And it's about to be over any moment now. And therefore, says the Lord, I will surely avenge them. Behold, my people is led as a flock. I will avenge them. And my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. I will not allow them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. Moses says no more. In the keys of Enoch, it says that cities of light are going to be what? Coming out from under, um, um, from the oceans. 
as a place of refuge for the righteous who, who walk in holiness and righteousness. Cities of light is going to come out from out of the ocean, prepared from before time for you, beloved. Musa says, I will not, I will not allow you to dwell in the land of Egypt. Don't be surprised if people in your family, if you or your family go to bed and wake up in the city of the Rechabites. From the pseudopigrapha, I have a study about the Rechabites. Go watch that. Don't be surprised if you go to bed and wake up in the city of Marine, the people of Ina. Don't be surprised when you go to sleep and you wake up somewhere else. The Most High says, I will not suffer you to dwell in the land of Egypt, in the land of your captivity. I will bring them with a mighty hand. I will bring them with a stretched out arm. And I will smite Egypt with plague. As you can see, Egypt. Egypt is not just in America. Egypt is all over the world. Egypt is wherever the people of God are found to be. Moses says, I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretch out arm. I will smite Egypt with plagues. Egypt has plagues right now. I will smite Egypt with plagues and I will destroy all the land thereof. The Most High is going to destroy Egypt with plague and such. Famine, pestilence, death, destruction. You'll see. I'm going to read it for you in the book of Jared as a review. Go back and watch the Generations of the Terrible videos. But let's get to the meat, beloved. Egypt shall mourn, says the Mossad. And the foundation of Egypt shall be smitten with the plague. The foundation of Egypt shall be smitten with punishment that God shall bring upon it. It's funny to me. It's absurd. It's, I can't put my mind around it. How all these things are going on around the world right now. And people are still doing nonsense. People are still caught up in their, in, in just the walking dead. They're just the walking dead. Oblivious to Titanic sinking. You know, when a Titanic was sinking, the musicians were still playing the music, giving the impression that everything was okay. That's what's going on right now. Titanic is sinking. Then they're almost under, under the water. You have people out here thinking that everything is okay. Meanwhile, the Mosai has already smitten Egypt with plagues. I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretch out arm. I will smite Egypt with plagues as before. I will smite Egypt with plagues as before. And I will destroy all the land thereof. The Most High says, I'm the same yesterday, today, I never change. Just like I set it off on Egypt and I smite Egypt with plagues as before with my man Moses. I'm going to smite Egypt with plagues again. I will smite Egypt with plagues as before, and I will destroy all the land of Egypt. Egypt shall mourn, and the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plagues and punishment that God shall bring upon it. They will till the ground, they that till the ground shall mourn, they that work the ground shall mourn for their seeds shall fell through the blasting and hail. And with a fearful constellation, look, the crops will not produce no more as it, as it were before. The crops will not produce as it did before a couple of years ago. I believe two years ago. A lot of flooding in the Midwest destroyed a lot of the crops. Well, more destruction is on the way because the Most High says, They that till the land shall mourn also, for their seeds shall fail by the blasting of hailstones and with a fearful constellation. Okay? Some, some rock, some, some asteroid, asteroid coming from the heavens and setting it off 
on the farmers right now. The farmers, they have no idea what's coming their way. Those wicked farmers that work for Satan, polluting your food, selling you poison. Yes, go watch that video, The Generations of the Terrible. Let's get to the meat. Woe to the world, says the Most High. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein. Woe to the world and them that dwell in the world. For the sword and their destruction draws nigh. For the sword and their destruction draws nigh. And one people, listen y'all, this is it. And one people shall stand up to fight against another. And one people shall stand up to fight against another. And swords in their hands. Does not that describe today? One people shall stand up to fight against another and guns in their hands. Isn't that what's happening today in the capital? Fighting against one another and guns in their hands? Swords in their hands? Woe to the world and them that dwell in it. For the sword and the destruction draws nigh. And one people shall stand up to fight against another. And swords in their hands. There shall be sedition among men. And invading one another. They shall not regard their kings. They don't give a damn about the president. The senators. The congressmen. They shall not regard their kings nor their princes. They don't care about the politicians. They want what they want and they want it now. With swords in their hands. Men shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. And that what's going on right now? Men shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able to. For because of the pride, the cities shall be troubled. For because of the pride, the cities shall be troubled. The houses shall be destroyed and men shall be afraid. Does not that describe 2021? 2020? 2021? January 6, 2021? Sword. In their hands. They shall not regard their kings and their princes. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor. But shall destroy their houses with the sword. And spoil their goods. Because of the lack of bread. That's the famine right there. And for, and for great tribulation. It's about to get worse beloved. But don't fear, Mosai. Remember what he told you from the beginning of this lesson. Fear not the imagination against thee. Fear not the incredulity, their inability to believe that it is the Most High setting it off. That it is not the quote unquote Illuminati or the elite. No, it is the Most High setting it off. Fear not their incredulity, their inability to believe, or they're unwilling, they're, they are un, unwilling or un, unable to believe something. Their unwillingness and their inability to believe that it is the Most High setting it off on them. Don't fear that. Don't fear their vain imagination against you. No, no. They're going to destroy each other. They're going to kill one another. Not you. You are the, the children of light. The Most High will not let them touch you. Let me get that for you right now. Let's go now to the keys of Enoch. Well, before we go to the keys of Enoch, let's cover. Where's my sealed portion? Right here. Let's go to the sealed portion and get some more of the dis destruction going on among the camps of the wicked. Sealed portion, chapter 12. Let me read from the back and work my way backwards. 
Page 527, number 104. Wherefore, O you peoples of the earth, when you receive these writings, it must needs be that you consider these writings with all diligence. Therefore, O you peoples of the earth, it must needs be when you receive these writings that you consider them with all diligence and it is expedient that you are humble before the most high it is expedient it is of the essence that you are humble before your creator and take care that you learn to love messiah and come to love a knowledge of your sin or you shall be forever miserable and in the end, have your abode with the deck at the shore. You don't want that. You don't want that. No, that's not what the most I want for you. Remember what Boko Haram III says that echoes again what is being uttered here in the back, chapter 12. Search out these things. Search out these things for they have been hidden from you. But now they come before your eyes. And those who desire to serve God and have groped to find a way have come upon a blessing. You got to search out the scriptures, beloved. Messiah says, study to show thyself approved. I want you, he also says in the Coburn, I want you to study from the best books of wisdom. I want you to be wiser above all those around you. Also in the Coburn, it says also, Listen to this. Listen to this, beloved. You got to consider this writing with all diligence. This we give you, the hidden books. Remember, these are the hidden books. These, the hidden books. These, the hidden books. These we give you, the hidden books. They contain an accumulation of, har of harvested wisdom. They contain the accumulation of harvested wisdom and truth garnered over generations. These books have wisdom and truth that have been accumulated over generations. This we give you. May they serve you in your days as well as they serve us. He says, for today, we are persecuted for our books. We can only consign these books to the ground and destiny. We can only consign the Coburn, the keys of Enoch, the, the mysteries, ancient mysteries of Melchizedek, the sealed portion. We, we can only assign these books to the ground and destiny, trusting that they will, call, they will come forth. They will be called, they will be called in a receptive generation and at the proper time. Trusting that these writing which we assign to the ground and destiny will be called forth at the proper time and in a receptive generation. Beloved, you are the receptive generation and this is the proper time. They don't know what's going on right now. They're in a state of they're in a, uh, a state of confusion and shock. This is a review. I'm gonna go in this book to do a quick review. But go and watch the generations of the terrible part one and part two, and go watch Messiah cries. I'm gonna do a quick review. I'm gonna show you what's going on right now in the camp of the wicked, so you do not fear their incredulity. So the most, most I told you, don't fear, believe and never doubt. Let me show you what's going on right now, real quick. Because remember, you live in the generations of the terrible. The Messiah showed Aki this vision and Aki was terrified. Aki said, the vision is hard for me. And the Lord said, what is it you see, Aki? Aki said, the generations of the terrible.
Aki asked Messiah, how can this be such a thing? How can this be? How can such a thing be in the midst of your creation? And Aki saw the wicked plundering. And Aki saw the wicked destroying. And Aki saw the wicked murdering in the name of Messiah. Aki saw the wicked doing all of that. And Messiah showed Aki a whole lot. But let's see what else Aki saw. Listen to this. This is what the wicked did. And that contract expired. It backfired. Now they're wide open. They're wide open for the destruction of the Messiah spoken of in the book of Ezra 15. Messiah could have set, set it off for them already a long time ago. But he gave them time. Messiah gave Satan time to do his thing. Listen to this. Page 510. Chapter 12, number 48. And number 47. Let's start with 47. And it came to pass that Semahaza gained a place of high standing among the men, among the people of the world, among the elite, among the rich, among the politicians, among the quote unquote lawmakers. Satan gained a place of high standing among them by his lying vision, by lying to them, by giving them a, a, a vision contrary to what the Most High wants for his children. Excuse me. And Aki saw that in the course of time, Semahaza would become so strong that this deck at the shore would rise up to establish dominance over the earth. Semahaza, Satan would become so strong that his children would rise up and establish dominance over the earth. That the fallen angels would rise up and establish dominance. They established dominance over the earth, beloved. You know, the fallen have established dominance in the school system. In the entertainment industry, in the um, agriculture industry, they offer your food. They were all in the classrooms. The most I shut that down. They were they all in the entertainment, the television, the movies, the music. They are everywhere. They're in the pharmaceutical industry. They're in the medical system. They're in the law system. They're in the justice system. They are everywhere. They were in the church. They're still in the church, but the most I shut that down too. They gain dominance on the earth. Aki saw that Semahaza hated repentance. No, Satan hates repentance. And he hates when you get on your knees to give God a blessing. He hates when you want to repent. That's why he puts everything in your way to prevent you from praying, from repenting. He always sending a distraction your way to prevent you from going to your father with a re repented heart. Because he knows if he keeps you from repenting, you cannot have the protection of the act of the shore. If you do not walk around with a repented heart, which is one language that all the holy watchers speak in common is repentance. All right, let me repeat that again. There is a common thread. There is a common language among all the holy watchers. In that common language, that common thread that they all speak among one another is repentance. Every time you approach any one of them, you have to repent for something. Shout out to Sabah Nabaya. He did a great lesson today. Go watch that lesson, y'all. Every time you approach the, the all the echo the choice, you got to repent for something. So if, if Sema has that, he knows that. So all he's trying to do all his days is to prevent you from repenting. Because when you don't repent, you are outside of the protection of your power. And Aki saw that Semahaza hated repentance. 
and he hated the law of virtue. What is the law of virtue? Jeshuan. What is the what is Jeshuan? The foundation of the law of virtue. What is that? The laws of God. The law, statutes, and commands of the Most High given uh, given to Adam and for his twelve sons in the beginning, and also reestablished with um, uh, Israel for his twelve sons. Jeshuan, the foundation of the law of virtue. Satan hated repentance and he hates the law of virtue. Not for him, he hated for you. He was alive from the beginning. And that the great and abominable church did away with these things in the name of Messiah. Oh, they say, you don't need to repent. You don't need to ask for forgiveness. Jesus loves everybody. That's all you need. I'm blessed and highly favored. That's all you need to say. You're going to go to heaven. You're going to go to heaven fornicating. You're going to go to heaven being a rapist. You're going to go to heaven being a pedophile. You will go to heaven to, uh, committing adultery. You will go to heaven as you are. So they did what? They did away with repentance because they're lying to you. Because Satan is the foundation of the, Satan is the founder of the abominable church, which he's the foundation of it. He's the founder of the abominable church. So whatever he says goes. So he hates repentance. He hates the law of virtue. So he took it out of the church. And here you are going to church, thinking you're going to heaven, but you are walking a slow walk to hell. And on your way to hell, you 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 had a your your uh, your meeting with with Messiah. Messiah met you on your road to Damascus. That's a better way to say it. Messiah met you on your way on your road to Damascus, and 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 he woke you up. He gave you an opportunity to repent. He gave you an opportunity to develop a relationship with him. He gave you an opportunity to for Jeshuan. He wants you to reestablish Shabuwa, the religion of the righteous. Shabuwa, the religion of the righteous. Established by Naba, your first mother, whom you used to know as Eve. Reestablished by Shem on Mal Potak as a protection for the righteous and as a resistance against evil. Shabuwa is like a shield. It's like a hedge of protection around you. Shabuwa was reestablished in America in this, in the fourth part by your brother Aki. Shabuwa. Shabuwa must be celebrated. There's a schedule to celebrate Shabuwa uh, for, uh, from the Brotherhood of Christ in their website. They have a schedule. You can print that out. The people who write who translate the books of remembrance they have a schedule on the holy days and when Shabua comes around to celebrate the holy day Shabua okay get that you need that so they did away with these things in the name of Messiah and he saw that this church spewed out multitudes of people who had no conscience and they acted wantonly. Yes, this was you and I. We came out of that church. We don't know nothing about forgiveness. We don't know nothing about repentance. We don't know nothing about salvation. We don't know nothing about loving the brethren. We don't know nothing about walking in the fruits of the spirit. Let alone having the gifts of the spirit. We were dumb. The walking dead. Now listen to this. The wicked, the wicked of the great and abominable church began in great earnest to empower all the deck at the shore. And the wicked love the fallen angels. The wicked love the deck at the shore. The wicked were made rich by them and they sought them out. They dug deep into the earth to discover where the Holy Great One had put them to hide them from before his face at the time of the flood. And the wicked brought out the deck of the shore. The wicked brought out 
the fallen angels. They brought them forth. They brought them out in abundance. Out of the earth where the great and holy one had buried them. The wicked went and sought out the fallen angels and brought them out from their abodes. And they made a pact with them. They cut contracts with them. They made covenants with them that they would consider that all men through the fallen angels would be blessed, which is a direct, which is a direct opposition. What's the word? Which is a direct reversal from what the Most High told Abraham. Through you, all nations shall be blessed. Not through the deck of the choice. The wicked brought out the fallen angels from out of the earth. And they made a pact with them. That they would consider that all men. Through the fallen angels. Through the deck of the choice. Would be blessed. And they made all their things. And they made all their substance. According to this covenant. So they, they had a contract. They had a covenant with the fallen angels. And the Most High has null and void this contract. No more a contract right now. They don't have that contract no more. That contract is null and void right now. Let me tell you what's in the camp of the wicked. In the camp of the wicked. Plagues. Disease. Pollution. Tsunami. Earthquake. Famine. Destruction. Pestilence going against each other with arms, killing each other. The most I said so. In this book, go back and watch the videos. The generations of the terrible. And we just read what happened today. Ezra 15. Verse 16. Let's read it again. Verse 15, for the sword in their destruction draws nigh and one people shall stand up to fight against another and swords in their hands. That's what they're doing today, January 6th. There shall be sedition among men and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings. They shall not regard their princes. And the course of the actions shall stand in their power. A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able to. For because of the pride, the city shall be troubled. The houses shall be destroyed and men shall be afraid. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of famine, because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. Behold, says God, I will call together all the kings of the earth to reverence me. Reverence, deep respect. Moses says, I will call all the kings of the earth to have deep respect for me. How would he do that? Well, let me take you back to the beginning of Ezra 15. Behold, says the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the earth, upon the world. I will bring the sword. I will bring famine. I will bring death. I will bring destruction. That's how he's going to get all the kings of the earth. All the kings of the world going to come reverence the Most High. So what's happening today? The sword that you see in their hands today going against each other in the state capital? was ordained by God himself, not Satan. This is not the work of the elite. No, this is the work of the most high power, the master, master, master chess player. The restorer of the breach. The way maker. The gatherer of Zion. I will call all the kings of the earth to reverence me. To turn themselves against one another. And I will repay the things that they have done to my people. He's going to turn them against each other. 
He said, I will repay the things which they have done to them, which is you. All the things that they have done to you. Let's keep reading this. This is beautiful right here. Like as they do today unto my chosen, so I will do also and recompense them. Thus says the Lord God, my right hand shall not spare the sinners. My right hand shall, you know who the, who the most high right hand? Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai is the right hand of the most high. He sits at the right hand of the father. He shall not spare the sinners. And my sword shall not seize over them that shed innocent blood upon the earth. The fire is gone forth, says the Musa. The fire is gone forth from his wrath. The holy angel, the holy watcher, the Bariel has gone forth. The wrath of the Musa has consumed the foundations of the earth and the sinners like the straw that is candled. Woe to them that sin and keep not my commandments, says the Lord. That's a warning to you, Zion. Try your best right now. Right now, all you have to be concerned with is to keep the commandments of God. Woe to them that lie. Woe to them that sin. Woe to them that commit adultery. Woe to them that commit whoredom. Woe to them that wax in iniquity. Woe to them that sin, says the Most High. Woe to them that sin and keep not my commandments. Woe to them that don't have compassion. Woe to them that do not express unconditional love. At least try to. Woe to them that keep not my commandments. Woe to them that are not meek. Woe to them that disobey me. Woe to them that follow their own hearts. Woe to them that do not honor my Shabbat days. Woe to them that keep not my commandments, says the Mosa. I will not spare them. I will not spare you if you keep not my commandments, whether it be Jew or Gentile. Woe to you, says the Mosa, if you keep not my commandments. This is a day of trouble and not a day of many words. Woe to them that keep not my commandments, says the Mosa, for I will not spare them. I will not spare their children. Mm -mm -mm. I will not spare them. Go your way, you children, from the power. Defile not my sanctuary. Go your way from, from me, the Most High. Don't defile my sanctuary. For the Lord knows all them that sin against him. Esdras 15, verse 26. For the Lord knows all them that sin against him. And therefore delivers he them unto death and destruction. Oh my goodness. For the Lord knows all them that sin against the Lord. And delivers them unto death and destruction. For now are the plagues come upon the whole earth. For now are the plagues come upon the whole earth and you shall remain in them, the Mosa says. The plague are upon the whole earth and you who sin and walk not in my commandments, the plague are upon you. The Mosa will not spare you and you shall remain in them. The plague, the famine, the pestilence, the sword, the destruction, the violence, the earthquake, the hailstorms, the tsunami, the tempest, the conflagration of fire are upon the earth. The ten plagues of the apocalypse of Abraham are upon the earth. The plagues of Egypt are upon the earth. And you shall remain in them, says the Most High. I will not spare you, says the Most High. Depart from me, says the Most High. Depart from me and defile not my sanctuary. 
For the Lord knows all them that sin against him and deliver he them unto death and destruction. For now the plagues come upon the whole earth and you shall remain in them. For now the plagues come upon the whole earth and you shall remain in the plagues. For God shall not deliver you because you have sinned against them. For the Most High shall not deliver you because you have sinned against the Most High. For the Most High shall not deliver you from the plague. No, you shall remain in them. Why? Because you have sinned against Him. The plagues are upon the earth and you shall remain in them. The Most High shall not spare you. Why? Because you have disobeyed the Most High. And he shall deliver who, whoever sinned against him unto death and destruction. For now are the plagues come upon the whole earth, and you shall remain in them. For God shall not deliver you, because you have sinned against him. America, America, Egypt, wherever you are, if you sin against the Most High and the plague is on your shores and the plague is in your family, somebody you know have the plague, that person is in sin. It's very hurtful. It's very hurtful. That person is in sin because the Most High says, I protect those I love. He cannot not protect those he loves. He cannot Hit you with the plague if you are his. There's no way the plague gonna hit you. No, there's no way the pestilence gonna hit you. No, there's no way accidents, premature death gonna hit you. No, no, the most I says, I protect those I love. He's not a man that he should lie. He says he will deliver he that sins against him unto death and destruction. Not not those that walk in his laws, statutes, and commandments. No, not his children of the light who receive his command directly, who walk upon the earth in direct relation with him. No, not his children of the light, his divine that spoke are created with a higher spiritual capacity. No, not them. Not those who are the fruits of the spirit. No, not them, the others. If you know anybody close to you with the plague, tell them to repent. Tell them they're dealing with something. There's something hidden in the hearts. The Most High says the Spirit will sift you out. Rahaviel will go into your lungs and snitch you out to the Most High. Rahaviel will tell the Most High about your secret sins, your secret thoughts, everything hidden in your lungs, everything you have hidden in your mind, any thought, Rahaviel will go out and sift you out and report that to the Most High. And the Most High, in his compassion, will send Holy Fire the Bariel to clean you out and purge you out with Hesop, with Holy Fire the Bariel and clean your soul and your spirit and purge you out. Mosai says, I will heal you. What he says, what? Isaiah what? He says, I will what? Let me get that for you real quick. Jeremiah 30, 17. Mosai says, I will restore health unto you. I will heal your wounds, declares the Lord. Because you are called an outcast, Zion for whom no one cares. What's that say? I care for you. You're not an outcast. No, I will restore health unto you and I will heal your wounds. How are you going to do that, Mosa? Repent of your sins, repent of your evil, repent of your wickedness so you don't stay in the plagues that cover the earth like a blanket. So I will not deliver you unto death and destruction. So I will give my angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. So no pestilence shall hit you, no snare of the fowler. So when you call upon me, I will hear your voice and I will know, oh, that's my son calling upon me. Therefore, I will honor your prayer. I will deliver you and with long life, I will satisfy you. I will say to you, you can stay in the shadow. You can abide under me. 
I will give my wings charge over you. Oh yeah, you can stay here, I got you. Most I ain't gonna leave you out there so the deck out of the shore you can have a number on you. No, no. Repent. Forgive. Repent. Repentance is when you admit your error before the Most High and grieve with the Most High. You got to be very sorry for what you've done. And you got to create in your mind a change as to what you will do in place of the error. Because your soul is corrupted when you sin. Remember, seal portion, page 16, chapter 6. Aki saw and beheld legions of wicked souls being cast out from the presence of the Most High power. Aki saw and beheld weak legions, legions of souls. Page 16, chapter 6. Page 16, chapter 6, still portion, final testament of Jesus Christ. Aki saw and beheld legions of souls, a gazillion number of souls being cast out from the presence of the Mosai. These wicked souls were going throughout the earth, seeking to deceive the sons and the daughters of Yatsikar and Naba, Adam and Eve. Those wicked souls were going throughout the earth, seeking whom they may devour. So when you were sinning, when you were out there walking with your eyes wide shut, when you were the walking dead, your soul was being corrupted. When you were cheating on your wife, when you were cheating on your husband, your soul was being corrupted. When you were fornicating in the night on your bed, your soul was being corrupted. Aki said, the, the, those wicked souls were corrupting your soul. But hallelujah, blessed be the most high. Aki also saw and beheld a heavenly army being organized in the heavens. And the leader of this army was Yeshaya, Mozai, Yahusha HaMashiach, was leading these armies in righteousness, going out to battle against the armies of Lucifer. Messiah himself, Melchizedek priest, had, was the head of this army. And he was leading this army to go and battle against the armies of Lucifer. Who do you think gonna win this fight? This entire chapter, Ezra 15, if you have Ezra, wherever you have it, in whatever book you have it, in the pseudopigrapha, download a copy, read the entire chapter. I will not read the whole thing tonight. I just wanted to get you this meat. Let me read you down from 49. Let me jump down to 49. I will send plagues upon you. Widowhood. Mosa says, I'm going to kill your men. Now, you know, there are more men dying from the plagues than women. Mosa says, I will send plagues upon you. Widowhood. I'm going to kill all your men. I'm going to kill every man in your family. Your women, they're going to be widows. They're going to have no one to protect them. I'm going to kill your fathers. I'm going to kill your uncles. I'm going to kill your brothers. I'm going to kill your sons. I will send plagues upon thee. Widowhood. Poverty. If the, if the head of household dies. If the father dies of the plague and no more money come into the house what do you think comes after the death of the father or oh, the head of household the men who are supporting the house financially poverty I will send plague upon you widowhood poverty oh yeah enjoy that because you have done it to us you have killed our sons and our, and our brothers. You have killed our uncles. You send them to jail for frivolous crimes. In your perverted criminal and justice systems. 
they go to court for frivolous made up crimes by the cops. You find them guilty. You weigh them in the balances and find them guilty. You send them to jail for 20 years for a crime that they could have had probation. You fashion a sentence for them in the pew of your courtrooms. You, 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 along with your prosecutors, you practice your dark arts and you render our sons guilty. You send them up top in prison where they're not exposed to being raped, sexual abuse. Not only that, mental abuse. Not only that, physical abuse. Straight men turning into women. They're being used as slaves to produce goods that you use every day. Being paid pennies on a dollar. For the next 20 years, they made $20. All because you hated them. All because their skin were darker than yours. All because you have an inherent hatred in your heart for them. Welcome to Esau's trouble. Welcome to the next thousand years of plagues. Welcome, beloved, to the ne next thousand years of poverty and famine, pestilence and such. Welcome. Enjoy that. Mosa says, I will send plague among you, upon you. Widowhood, I'm going to kill all your men. Poverty, ain't going to have no money in the house. You're not going to be able to go out and enjoy your dinners no more. Your nice little house going to go on foreclosure now. Yes, it's going to happen. Your car is going to get repossessed. I will send famine on you, sword, pestilence, to waste thy houses with destruction and death. You're done. The most is about to set it off on you on another level. As we increase, you decrease. Mosa says, I'm going to waste away your house. Waste thy houses with destruction and death. And the glory of thy power shall be dried up as a flower. The glory of your power shall be dried up like a raisin in the sun. The glory of thy power shall be dried up like a flower. Mm -mm -mm. When the heat shall arise that is sent over thee, the glory of your power shall be dried up like a raisin in the sun, shall be dried up like a flower that withers and the leaves fall off. You ever see a flower withering away? The life is slowly leaving that flower. The glory of thy power shall be dried up like this flower, shall be dried up like a raisin in the sun. You shall be weakened as a poor woman with stripes and as one chastised with wounds. Remember how you did our ancestors? How you, how you whipped them with cords and sliced them and diced them? Somebody bring me my arm. Uh, a uh, hundred years of slave book. It's 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 either on my bookshelf in the uh, in the bedroom or in the bookshelf in the living room. Also, hun, I need some water too, please. You shall be weakened as a poor woman. Hold up. Give me a second, y'all. Stay right there. Don't come in. Come here, 100 years of lynching. Fill it up. Thanks. Give me a coaster. Thank you. Forgive me, family. I had to drink a little water. 
51, Ezra 51, Ezra 15, verse 51. You shall be weakened as a poor woman with stripes, as one chastised with wounds, so that the mighty and lovers shall not be able to receive you. Now, a woman with stripes, remember this book? We never did a lesson on this, but this is for you, America, Egypt. I could open any page in this book and read something wicked that you've done to our people. Of course, the Most High delivered us unto your hands, duly numbered, but you did go above and beyond. Lynch for being black, just for the hell of it. Lynch for being black. I mean, if you have to be anything, just be yourself, but you're going to get lynched for being black. Let me read you something real quick. This is why the most I send it off on you. Let me let me find something. <clears throat> let me find something, anything. I could open any page. Negro youth mutilated for kissing white girl. Whew. Whew, what a sin. What a horrible crime. From my experience, she kissed him couldn't wait to kiss him, wanted to kiss him, went to bed dreaming, thinking about kissing him. She did that. Well, Negro boy mutilated for kissing white girl, April 30th, 1914. Let me see if there's anything that happened in January 6th. Let me see what happened in January 6th. Let me see if I could find something for January. Give me a second. Let me see if something happened for January. June, March, April, May, everything here is so random. So we may not, I may not find. But I, what I want. Oh, look at that. Hang on the oak tree. How disrespectful. The oak trees. You're gonna hang our people on our own oak trees. Oh, how disrespectful. How disrespectful. Don't you know there's a record of that somewhere? Sheesh. You guys are done. I hate to be you right now. Yeah, I was me for a long time. We're going to switch spots. Let's switch spots a little bit. Let me see if I find something for January. Are we in January? We in oh, January. January 26, January 27, January 20, January 1st. Oh yeah, yeah, January 1st. There's no January 6th, but there's a January 1st. Let me see. Lynchings continue to drop. By January 1st, lynching was dropping, but it picked up back, it picked back up. Lynch Negro brothel owner for hiring white girls. He got lynched for giving a job to a white girl. Oh damn. That is crazy, y'all. He got lynched for hiring somebody. Lynch as warning to all nigger lovers. Lynch. Okay, I'm going to read this one. Lynch. Minutes after the jury cleans him of murder. Now, you tell me. Lynch. After a jury clears him of murder. Which he was accused that he never committed. A murder he was accused of, which he never committed. But let's read this real quick. But before I read this, let me reread you what the Most High says. You shall be weakened as a poor woman with stripes, and as one chastised with wounds, so that the mighty and lovers shall not be able to receive you. Lindsay. 
December 19, Mississippi, Clarksdale. Lindsay Coleman, Negro, was lynched here tonight. Lindsay Coleman, Negro, was lynched here tonight. A few minutes after a jury in circuit court declared him not guilty of the murder of Grover C. Nicholas, plantation store manager. Glover C. Nicholas was probably murdered by his neighbor, Bob. But Lindsay Coleman got arrested for that murder, was tried, found not guilty. All praises to the Most High. But wait, there's more. Was kidnapped, probably right in the courtrooms. Or as he walked outside, was snatched up by a mob. So say mob, that's in the state capital today. No mask, swords in their hands, doing it up. They took that young man. They did what to him? Minutes after he left court, lynched him. Hung him, probably stripped him naked cut off his goods they probably castrated him they probably whipped him with stripes they probably gouged out his eyes cut off his finger fingernails and his his toes and his you know they so oh they so cut us up and take our skin and and pass our skin down in the family preserve our skin and and pass it down in the family in wills. They had wills, beloved, where they passed you down as a slave. They passed your your skin, your hair, your, your fingers. They preserve your skeletons and they pass it down in their families as a souvenir because they think in their mind that you're always going to be a slave, that there will never be a day of recompense. So they pass even after you're dead. They still have an obsession with you sick 100 years of lynching no this is 600 years of lynching 7 800 years of lynching this is not 800 years of lynching even that is enough gruesome murders in here who's gonna pay for this america who shall pay for these crimes the dove is back in america the chastising spirit has awakened because of the stench of wickedness. Mosai says, I would weaken you as a poor woman with stripes. Would I be, would I, would I, with jealousy, have so proceeded against you, says the Lord? Would I, with jealousy, come after you, says the Lord? If you have not always slain my chosen, if you had not always slain my chosen, exalting the stroke of thy hands. If you didn't always kill my chosen, exalting the stroke of thy hands, lynching us, exalting the stroke of thy hands, raising your hands in murder against us. Moses says, would I come after you with jealousy if you didn't, what, slain my chosen, exalting your hands, exalting the stroke of thy hands and sin over the dead hmm. after you kill them you say over the dead bodies oh you were drunk and sin over the dead when you was drunken wait hold on let me read that again and you had not if you had not always slain my chosen exalting the stroke of thy hands and sin over the dead when you was drunken after you exalt your hand over his chosen, after you raise your hand and kill his chosen, you are running your mouth over the dead bodies. You just was talking trash. Oh, you know what? He deserved to die. You know what? This Negro, uh, I was afraid for my life type of thing. Oh, he moved. He, he blinked. 
He blinked, Your Honor. I was afraid for my life when he looked in. When he turned around and looked at me and he blinked, I saw his beautiful brown eyes and I was scared to death. So I had to put 16 in him. Moses said, I'm going to come after you like a je jealous God. He says, you know what? Would I with jealousy have to proceed against you if you had not always killed my chosen? You think I would have come after you if you don't always kill my chosen? Or, or, or reverse that. I'm going to come after you with jealousy because you have always killed my chosen. Number 55. The reward of thy whoredom shall be in thy bosom. The reward of thy whoredom shall be in thy chest. You're going to have your reward very close to you. Therefore, you shall receive recompense. Therefore, wicked people, you shall receive recompense for always killing his chosen, his ancient covenant people. Sorry, it's a harsh message. But how do you think the Most High feels when he looked down and he see the innocent being killed? He see the innocent being raped and murdered. Opportunities denied, redlining, lynching, castration, kidnapping, violence, all on his chosen. Some deserve it, some didn't. The reward of thy whoredom shall be in thy bosom. Therefore, that you shall receive recompense. Like as you have done unto my chosen, says the Lord. You shall receive recompense just as you have done unto my chosen, says the Most High. You shall receive recompense just as you have done unto my chosen, says the Most High. You shall receive recompense. I'm going to kill you just like you have killed my chosen. You read them, something going to happen to you. You shut them up, something going to happen to you. You shall receive recompense just like you have done unto them is going to happen to you the same way. You shall receive recompense as just as you have done unto my chosen. The reward of the reward of thy order shall be in thy bosom. Like as you have done unto my chosen, says the Lord. Therefore, Shall you receive recompense? I'm going to repay you just like you've done to my chosen. Even so shall God do unto you and shall deliver thee into mischief. The Most High is going to deliver you into mischief. Let's get the meaning of mischief. Mischief. Mischief meaning mischief. Playful misbehavior. Troublemaking, especially in children. Mischief. Badness, misbehavior, perversity, funny business, harm, or trouble caused by someone. That, that there you go. Most I said he's gonna deliver you uh, into mischief. He's gonna deliver you unto mischief. He's gonna deliver you unto harm or trouble. Caused by some someone or something, he gonna deliver you unto trouble caused by someone or something. He's gonna deliver you unto trouble caused by death. Animals shall be your death. He's gonna have some animal come from wherever and they're gonna kill you. A lion gonna be right in the city and the lion gonna mow you down. A deer going to jump at you. A dog going to go crazy and eat you up. Something. Trouble going to come to you. Trouble going to follow you. And it's going to be caused by something or someone. Accident is going to happen. The ley lines will activate. Your cars will go airborne. Something will happen. As you're walking down the street, something, will, mischief will happen to you. Why? Because you have done it to his chosen. Just as you have done unto my chosen. Says the Lord, even so shall God do unto you. And shall deliver you unto mischief. Mischief? What is mischief? A harm or trouble caused by something or someone. 
everything is against you now. The road don't like you. The waters don't like you. The trees hate your guts. The sun can't wait to scourge you, to burn your skin. The wind don't like you. No, these are all echo the choice. Oh, holy watchers, you, you, they, they don't like you right now. Why? Because you have messed around and touched his chosen. You have done to his chosen unspeakable things, despicable things, dishonorable things. Mosai says he's going to do unto you just as you have done unto his chosen. Thy children shall die of hunger just like our children have died in hunger. Thy children shall die of hunger and you shall fall through the sword. You shall fall through it. You not shall fall by the sword. No, you're going to fall through the sword. Thy cities shall be broken down. Yes. Hallelujah. And all thine, all that you possess, all thine shall perish. All that you possess shall perish with the sword in the field. Now let's, let's break that down. All thine, all thine, your mama, your daddy, your brothers, sisters, uncles, cousins, sons, daughters, wives, husbands, all thine. Your houses, your cars, everything thou possess, your all thine, everything that you possess, all thine shall perish, all thine, no exception, things, people, all thine shall perish with the sword. Mosa says, all thine shall perish with the sword. All thine shall perish. All thine shall perish. All thine, excuse me. All thine shall perish. All thine shall perish with the sword in the field. What's the field? The street, your job, wherever the hell you go. All thine shall perish. Whew. They that be in the mountains shall die. Malachiel hates your guts. You can't be on Malachiel with sin in your heart. Malachiel going to spew you out. All that be in the mountains. They that be in the mountains shall die of hunger. And, and eat their own flesh. Woo! They that be in the mountains shall die of hunger. Do not step foot on Malachiel. You will get lost on, the, on Malachiel. You will not find your way. And then what comes next is hunger. And you're going to eat your own arm out. And if you're with your friend, you're going to kill your friend. And you're going to eat your friend's flesh. It is a prophecy. You cannot escape it. Mosiah says, all thine shall perish. And they that be in the mountains shall die of hunger and eat their own flesh and drink their own blood for for very hunger of bread and thirst of water you're going to be so hungry and so thirsty you're going to drink your own blood you're going to eat your own flesh you're going to be so hungry and thirsty you were so hungry and thirsty when you were killing our people you're going to be so hungry and thirsty, you're going to drink your own blood and eat your own flesh. Malachiel, hate your guts. Don't go on Malachiel. You, as unhappy, shall come through the sea and receive plagues again. <laughs> you think you're going to get on the sea and go to another country and run away? Well, in this book, it talks about how you're going to go to your own lands. Musa says, when you go, you're going to get plagues again. There's a plague waiting for you when you flee. When you're going back to Europe, the plague is already there waiting for you. Wherever you go to Ireland, a plague is there waiting for you. You're going to Italy, plague waiting for you. The water, the Musa says, in the in the last days, I have cursed the waters. If you make it there, because you know, your boat might capsize and the sharks might just eat you. But if you make it through your voyage, plagues waiting for you there. 
Thou as unhappy, you are you as unhappy, you're gonna be so unhappy, and you're gonna go somewhere else. You shall come through the sea and receive plagues again. And in the passage, they shall rush on the idol city and shall destroy some portion of thy land and consume part of thy glory and shall return to Babylon that was destroyed. And you shall be cast down by them as stubble and they shall be unto thee as fire. Your children, thy children, your children shall they carry away captive. Hmm. And that prophecy. Let's get that. Your children shall they carry away captive. And look what thou have done. They shall spoil it. And mark the beauty of thy face. Woo! Let's read Isaiah 49, 25. But this is what the Lord says. Yes, captives will be taken from warriors and plunder retrieved thy fierce from... I don't like this translation. Give me a second. I don't understand what the hell I'm reading here. Okay. Hold up. Isaiah 49, 25. Isaiah 49, verse 25. Let's go. Let's see what thus says the Most High. But thus says the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away. Oh, thy children shall they carry away captive. Even the captives of the, of the mighty shall, they, shall be taken away and the prey of the terrible be delivered. Be delivered. 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 For I will contend with him who contends with you. And I will save your children. Thank you, Mosa. I will feed those who oppress you with their own flesh. Woo! What I just read. You shock. Check this out. Mm -mm -mm. Ezra 15, verse 58. They, shall, they that be in the mountains shall die of hunger. They that be in the mountains shall die of hunger and eat their own flesh. And drink their own blood. Isaiah 49. Verse 26. I will feed those. Who oppress you. With their own flesh. Ezra. 15. Verse 58. They that be in the mountain. Shall die of hunger. And eat their own flesh. And drink their own blood. Isaiah 49. 26. I will feed those who oppress you with their own flesh. You're going to eat your own flesh. And they shall be drunk with their own blood. Woof. And drink their own blood for, for very hunger of bread and thirst of water. And they shall be drunk with their own blood as with sweet wine. Your blood going to taste in your mouth as sweet wine. <laughs> no, not like that. You're going to drink it as if you were drinking sweet wine. It's going to taste so good because you're so thirsty. That's why you guys like raw steak so much. You have an appetite for blood. Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. And they shall be drunk with their own blood as with sweet wine. All flesh shall know that I, the Lord, I am your Savior, Selah. Ah, hallelujah. All flesh shall know that I, the Lord, am your Savior and your Redeemer, the mighty one of Jacob. All flesh shall know that I am thy Savior 
the mighty one of Jacob, the awesome, magnificent, excellent, exquisite, powerful, inconceivable, amazing, wonderful, beautiful. Let me read you. Let me let me let me brag on my God real quick. Who is the most hot? Huh? Let's read about, let's get some synonyms. Oh yeah. The mighty one of Jacob, the mighty one of Jacob, the mighty one of Jacob. I'm your God. All shall know I am your power. The mighty one of Jacob. Setting it off. Isaiah 41 and 10. Do not fear, for I am with you, says the Most High. Do not be dismayed, for I am your power. Don't fear, Jacob. Don't fear, Jacob, for I am with you. I am in your midst, Jacob. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I am your power. I will strengthen you. I will help you. And I will uphold you with my right hand. I will strengthen you, Jacob. I will help you, Jacob. And I will uphold you with my right hand. Surely they shall know that I love thee, the mighty one of Jacob, the sublime creator, the sublime power, the one with great excellence, grandeur, magnificent beauty, exalted one, the elevated one, the noble, lofty, awesome, awe-inspiring power, majestic God, magnificent, imposing, glorious, supreme power, the mighty one of Jacob, outstanding, excellent, excellent, grand, great, the power of Jacob, first class, marvelous, splendid, delightful, the mighty one of Jacob, blissful, rapturous, fantastic, superb, fabulous, the mighty one of Jacob, terrific, stellar, heavenly, divine, the mighty one of Jacob, out of this world, smashing, amazing, wonderful, mighty, horrible, terrible, revered, in the entire universe, Rejoice, Jacob. Rejoice. Your power loves you. <laughs> Rejoice, Jacob. This is a time of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Where she comes and activating you, the gifts of the Spirit, because you possess. You have in your mists. You have in your hands. In your fabric. In your makeup. On your mind, in your heart, the fruits of the spirit. You have something to activate. You have a shield. You have a protection. Let's see. Let's see if we can see. Let's go to this book. Isaiah, a cosmic and messianic drama. Let's see if I could read you something real quick in here. Behold, in these days, the heavens may look out upon and watch for the hastening return of those who are inheritors of the divine seed. 
sending to them special angelic ministries. The Most High is going to send you special angelic ministries. Help from the angel armies. Help from the angel angelic hosts. Because you are an inheritor of the divine seed. Remember I told you that you are a divine diaspora. Not from out of the root nations of the earth. No, you're not from here. You are a divine diaspora. Selective spiritual. Your makeup is you from a selective spiritual makeup. You're not from here. So your help is not going to be from here. Your help is going to be from those whom you used to know that you forgot about. Sending you special angelic ministries. Since the outer world cannot minister to you. No, they can't minister to you. Yo, your help. Your ministration must come from the Spirit to give you aid. For the divine heavens are sending special angelic ministries unto all Israel. The divine heavens are sending special angelic ministries unto all Israel. To intensifying the divine urge within them and cause their aura to be filled with the breaths of the angelic world and take on their ancient beauty. Oh, hallelujah! The Most High is going to send you and I divine help from the heavens, divine help. From special angelic ministries. He's going to send that help unto all Israel. To intensify the divine urge within you and I. And cause our aura to be filled. And cause, that's, that's your shining right there. And cause our aura to be filled with the breaths of the angelic world. And take on our ancient beauty. Ooh. You and I are going to take on our ancient beauty. I can hardly contain myself. Mm. The heavens will thus heal all your spiritual lameness. The heavens will heal all your spiritual blindness. The heavens will heal all your spiritual hardness. Oh, Israel. Israel, look forward. Look forward to your aura to be to be filled. Look forward. Look forward to the ministration of the heavens. Look forward to that beloved special angelic ministries. Look forward. Oh, little feather. Look forward. I have nothing in here that would that would cause me to see a feather, y'all. I'm telling you this. This is crazy. Every time I'm doing studies, I see a little feather. I have nothing in here at all that would cause a feather to, to fall here. A little, little feather. Look forward to the divine heavens sending you special angelic ministries to intensify, to intensify your divine urge within you, to intensify your divine aura so you can put on so you can put on your ancient beauty. This is amazing. Let's close with this book, Keys of Enoch. Oh yeah, let's close with the keys. Let's close with the keys. Let me move this big Bible out of the way. Let's close with the keys of Enoch. Oh yeah, let's go into the keys. We need them keys. Let's let's open these locks. Let's go into them keys. Keys of Vina. 
book of knowledge, divine diaspora is being gathered at this time. Our divine diaspora, beloved, beloved, beloved. <laughs> I like beloved. Let's close with the keys. <sighs> Drink too fast. <coughs> good. I'm good. Got on the wrong pipe. <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> you have the wind pipe. I believe <clears throat> you have the esophagus and the throat. One is for food. Ah. Chapstick all over my mouth. One is for food. One is for air, one is for water, one is for food. <clears throat> if a drop of water <laughs> falls in the windpipe, you 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 get the reaction I just have. Coughing. <clears throat> you can actually drown <clears throat> if water falls in your windpipe. <clears throat> you can actually drown if water falls in your lungs. There's supposed to be no water in your lungs. Can actually drown. Yep. Sorry, y'all. <clears throat> Gonna go into the keys real quick. Page one twenty seven. Keys one thirteen. Number 45, let's go. The people of God then become the vehicle for the elect of the world. Hmm. This 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 is part of, of a lesson that I'm working on. This is part of a lesson that I'm working on. I'm just gonna read you one thing. The people of God <clears throat> then become the vehicle of the elect of the world. And the Most High will show His people the things that are coming. That's what I just read from the from from the from this big old Bible that I have in the Book of Esdras. The people of, and that's what's here in this book, all over this book. That's what I. That's what here. That's what here in the sealed portion of the brother Jared. That's why we read about in the Book of Akis in the in the Colbrand. That's why we read about this is a day of trouble, a warning, and not a day of many. Now that there are many words, most I will show his people the things that are coming. He's going to show us everything out of the books. He shall judge the world. He's going to show us everything that are coming. So we, you and I can get ready. So we can get houses. In, so you, can, you and I can get our homes in order. Our houses in order. Our homes in order. Our marriages. Our children in order. Our families. If they would listen to us. So we can get them in order only if they would listen to us. God will show his people the things that are coming so that they would understand how the reality of our, of our world will merge with the next world before the time of the coming of Messiah. The Messiah will show his people the things that are coming so that they will understand how the reality of our world will merge with the reality of the next world. This world will be destroyed, and this earth, the world. Hmm. The reality of this world, Mosiah will show us everything. 
all things that are coming so that we will understand how the reality of our world will merge with the next world before the time of the coming. We will be given a living knowledge. We will be given a living knowledge, a knowing of the next world that we will enter. For without this knowledge, we would feel that we are being deprived of life and entering consciousness death. Let me show you something. In this book, sealed portion, there is a complete, there is a complete knowledge of the next world to come. Chapter 92 in this book. Chapter 92 and back. Chapter 92 all the way back. All these chapters after chapter 92 talk about the world to come. During Adam's days there were there was righteousness and happiness without technology. Healthy living and exercise are essential for good health. During the millennium during the millennium, there will be no more death. There will be no more eating of flesh. At that time, all will follow the laws of health provided in God's chosen plan. The header. Just the header. Just the header. And then we will go into this chapter and dissect this chapter. So he says... We will be given the knowledge, a knowing of the next world that we will enter. For without this knowledge, we would feel that we are being deprived of life and entering consciousness death. We need to be ready to know what's to come. The most time is not just going to take us there. In this book, it talks about the life to come. Okay? Also, the different worlds that there will be. Y'all, oh, listen. The earth is not the only world. It's not the only place. It's not the only exist where life is. The Most High created many worlds. He told Moses in the in the in the so, so Book of Mormon, "I have created many worlds, and of this earth I'll tell you alone." Okay, Moses, Moses said, "Tell me about the others." And now, concern yourself with this one right now. I, I have many worlds. He said, "Every when you when you're on the earth and you look at the stars." You think these are stars. No. Men, men, you, we think we're looking at stars. He says, no, these are planets. It's not stars. These are, we view these as, we call them stars, but they are planets. These are not stars at all. These are planets, different worlds that the Most High creates. Listen to this, chapter 97 of this book. Chapter 97. Planetary Exploration. And archaeology in the latter days are condemned as worthless to the happiness of mankind. The Lord's knowledge and power shall be used during the millennium to prepare the planets as the degrees of glory in the kingdom of the Most High. Moroni uses Joseph Smith's revelation to describe the inhabitants of different degrees of glory. Humankind should use their knowledge of science to do good to others. Anything else that you use your science for is trash. Most of us only use it to do good. Anything else makes no sense because the most of us going to rearrange everything. So you don't know Jack. Another. So let's get another uh, header. This, this book is amazing, y'all. This book is amazing. This book has some of the best. This book says... If you just read this book, you don't need any other book. If you read this book alone, you don't need to read any other book. Well, then again, we're not going to believe that. No, we, we have to prove a matter. Okay, y'all. Let me read you. The last chapter in this book, chapter 100, one, 
half a page. Let's see what Maloney says. It's, it's titled, Love One Another As You Would Have Them Love You. Let's end this very intense lesson with some love. Mm? We discuss the destruction of the wicked. How the Most High is going to set it off on them. How they have a, a prophecy over their head that they will not be able to escape. It is done. It is done. It is spoken of. Whatever is done on, in heaven shall be done on earth. As above, so below. The Most High has already declared it. They can escape what's coming. And you can't escape what's coming. So do not sin. Walk in the ways of the Most High. Abide in love. Repentance. Holiness and righteousness. Behold. My soul is overcome at this time. Page 573. Chapter 100. Moroni's love. Moroni's epilogue. Love one another. As you would have them love you, which is the greatest commandment above all commandments. Behold, my soul is overcome at this time by the Spirit of God. For behold, I know that I am done fulfilling the commandment that I have received of the Lord. And that for which the Spirit has prepared me all the days of my life. And I know that I shall shortly die and return once again to the spirit world. For behold, the Lamanites are all around me and they have promised to avenge their fathers by my death. And when I have sealed these things up and hid them in the earth, I shall not run any longer, but I shall let them capture me and do to me what they will. And I will follow the example of my Lord and Savior, Yeshua Christ, and submit unto their hate, even unto death. But as they end my life, I will love them. I will forgive them for that which they do not understand. I will forgive them for that which they do to my flesh, knowing that they shall have no more power over me forever. And my eyes and face are wet with tears, for I am saddened that I must end this record and end my words unto you, my beloved brothers and sisters of the latter days. Behold, I love you all. Behold, Moroni says, he loves you all. Behold, I love you all. I have come to know you through the greatness of the words of the brother of Jared. I have come to know you through the greatness of the words of the brother of Jared and also through the visions and the revelations that I have received from the Holy Spirit concerning you. And I know that I have been hard at times because of the plainness of those things which the Lord has commanded me to reveal unto you according to the office and calling that I have received as a prophet of God. But in all these things, I have never ceased to love you. In all these things, I have never ceased to love you. For I am also your brother, and it is this exceeding love that engulfs my soul at this time. Behold, I have seen the beginning of our existence as the, as the spirit children of the Father, even at the beginning in his kingdom until the end of time, when we shall inherit the kingdom that shall bring us eternal joy and happiness forever. And my soul rejoices because of the things which I have seen. For I know that most of you, even the majority of the children of God shall be saved in one of his kingdom. Hallelujah. He knows that most of us, even the majority of the children of the Most High, shall be saved in one of his kingdoms, the kingdom of glory which you choose. 
And though at times the days of our probation might seem overwhelming in body and soul, I pray, my beloved brothers and sisters, that you do not give up hope. And in that which you do, and in that which you do not see and understand by the nature of the flesh that you have. I pray, my beloved brothers and sisters, that you do not give up hope. Do not give up a hope in that which you do not see and understand by the nature of the flesh that you do have. Behold, the future is wondrous and glorious. Behold, the future is wondrous and glorious. And it shall come to pass that good shall overcome evil in all things. And peace and happiness and order shall be the state of the universe as it has always been and shall always be worlds without end. And now, with my parting words unto you, I leave you my blessing and my love. Yea, love one another, do good to all. Look at your neighbors and imagine them as a child of God. Know that each of you is a child of the Most High and that he loves each of you and has done all things for your good. Remember the words of Christ which have been given unto you. Remember them, my beloved brothers and sisters, for in them you shall know peace and you shall know happiness. And one day we shall meet in the kingdoms of the Father where we shall receive eternal life. Hallelujah. These were the words of Moroni. He's all over these pages. He has written them down by the ministration of the Spirit. He has seen Messiah face to face, held them, hugged them, cried on his chest. He has been given revelation for you and I. He said, remember the words of Messiah. Remember the words of Messiah. Hmm. Love one another. Let's see. Remember the words of Messiah. Remember the words of Messiah. Love one another. Beloved, this is all I have for you tonight. I pray that this message is received well among you. We don't speak hate. We don't speak against anyone. We read prophecy. We get from the spirit we receive revelation from the Most High we receive visions, we receive dreams some of us now, it's going to happen, some of us going to receive personal visitations from the, from the hosts you're going to see angels, they're going to come right in your kitchen as you pray they're going to come right in your bedroom Right in your living room, as you are talking about the Most High, say, they that sit, then they that revealed, that revealed and loved the Lord, speak often to one another. As you speak often to one another about the Most High, because you revered the Most High, you have reverence for the Most High, you have deep respect for Him, as that is going on. You're going to reach a point where you cross over. Hmm? You're going to exercise your dual citizenship. Hmm. Hallelujah. You're going to exercise your dual citizenship where you can travel. You could go in 
the presence of the Eka Shoy, and to the presence of the angels, and to the presence of Mozart. You're going to go into the presence of the Retrobites and out of the presence. Just like that. You're going to go to the Retrobites for brunch. You're going to go and have brunch with the Eka Shoys, and come back on time for supper with your wife. Hallelujah. That's crossing over. Crossing over. Being in and out of the presence of the Holy Watchers and Messiah. Crossing over. A Abara was sent to the people to teach them how to conduct their lives in purity so that they too can cross over. Exercise that dual citizenship. Look, hon, I'm going to go for brunch. You want to come? Yes. Where are you going? Echo the Shoys. Gonna have brunch with the angels real quick. We'll be back on time for supper. It's gonna happen to you. Your spiritual cataracts will be removed. You will be no longer walking as a walking dead. Now you will have light and you shall shine. Your light shall shine. <laughs> Your light <clears throat> shall shine as you're supposed to. Your aura. Remember what we read in the book of Isaiah, the cosmic. Book of Isaiah. Value wow, book of Isaiah. Remember what we read in this book. Let me see if I can find it because I didn't save the page. <clears throat> Remember what we read in the in this book, the prophecy of Isaiah. Isaiah, a cosmic and messianic drama. In these days, the heavens may look out upon and watch for the hastening return of those who are inheritors of this divine seed. The heavens are looking for your return because you are inheritors of the divine seed. You are the inheritors. You are divinity. The heavens are looking out for your return. So return Zion. This is a gathering of Zion. So return Zion. Beholding the partiality maimed, beholding the halt, beholding the blind ones. <laughs> they're going to be looking at you like, oh, they're coming. Look at them. Looking at all. Oh, they're, they're all blind and they can't walk. They're stumbling. They have stumbling blacks all over. Look at them. Look at them. They're going to be smiling. Oh, the angels are like smiling at your return. Oh, look at you. Look at you. Oh, come, come. We got you. Beholding the partiality men, the halt and the blind ones, sending them to their special angelic ministries. <laughs> you're gonna send you to your special angelic ministries. <laughs> oh, you need a special place to refine you, to retune you, to realign you, to aid you in your return. Because no no ordinary venues suffice your needs. Now, nah, you're a special child. Nothing ordinary may suffice your need. Nothing on this earth is suitable to, uh, to help you open your return, to return to your former glory. Mm? For the divine heavens are sending special angelic ministries heaven is empty the divine heavens are sending special angelic ministries the barriers are back the divine heavens are sending angelic ministries unto all Israel the divine heavens are sending angelic ministries unto all Israel. That's you, beloved. To intensify 
the divine urge that you have to intens intensify the divine urge within you and cause your aura to be cause your aura to be filled with the breaths Rahav yell <laughs> with the breaths of the with the ruach of the angelic world and take on your ancient beauty when the breaths of the angelic world fill your aura all into your lungs your eyes your 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 pores all into your brain all on all into your blood vessels your membrane your bone marrow your the capillaries that's in your lungs all into your 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 blood cells your vena cava your upper and lower vena cava all into your thoracic cavity all into your chest all into your sternum all into your diaphragm all into your your kidneys when the divine aura okay when the angelic ministries fill your divine your aura when the when the breaths of the angelic world fill your divine aura beloved you're gonna take on your former beauty your ancient beauty mm -mm -mm. you're gonna take on your ancient beauty how do you look like just look at yourself say oh damn i'm gonna look so different <laughs> you're gonna Take on your ancient, your former glory. No more sickness. No more handicaps. No more lupus. No more cancer. No more, no more, no more autoimmune diseases. No, no more headaches. No more fevers. No more cold. No more weakness. No more arthritis. No more gangrene. No more, no more wheelchair. No more walkers. No more Medicare. No more AARP, no more Medicaid, no more Blue Cross, Blue Shield, no more insurance, no more. You're going to take on your former beauties. Hallelujah. Beloved Shalom, may the Most High bless you and keep you. And may He cause His aura <laughs> to fill you, His heavenly aura to shine upon you. You are the children of the light. You manifest the gift of the spirit. You are sent forth by the father. Here, the father placed a mark on your forehead to receive his command directly. Divine diaspora, the Hebrews created to be different, created to walk upon the earth in direct relation with the most size power, his glory. The Holy Spirit comes to activate within you the gift of the spirit. Because you, you have the fruits of the Spirit. You were created with a higher spiritual capacity. Created to be different. You have been exposed to a spiritual outpouring of spiritual power. Jacob seed, chosen, set apart above all that he has seen. He will teach you his laws and statutes, his commandments. Matter of fact, they are written on your hearts and in your mind. Be like David. Say, your laws I have written on my heart that I might not sin against you. Beloved, shalom. Shalom, beloved. My peace I, I give you, he says. My peace I leave you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world give peace. Was I, as I, Yahweh Shai. Mozart, Yahusha HaMashiach, your Savior, your Redeemer, gives peace. My peace, I leave you. Shalom, beloved. Most I love you. I love you. Pray for one another. Take me up to the Father in your prayers. I want to thank everyone who offered to support this ministry. I appreciate you. But your brother is good. Thank you. Just pray for me as I pray for you. When you fast, mention Abdullah Seer and family. Mention me. Most high, keep him safe. 
Send your angels to keep watch over his residence. Most high, send him your spirit so that he may come and talk to us about what thus says the Most High. Most High, keep that man safe and his family, his wife, his children. Keep them safe, beloved. That is sufficient for my needs. Thank you. I appreciate you. Shalom, beloved. <laughs>